Hello, good morning and welcome back to the Fish Locker out on the shore. James and I are out on the beach today. We were sat yesterday and we were thinking what shall we do? So we've decided that we're going to make a little bit of an activity. Today we're going to be playing Rock Pool Bingo. For anybody who isn't aware what Rock Pool Bingo is, it's a game that James and I created yesterday. <laughs> yeah, what we've got is we've got our nets, haven't we? Yep. Nets and buckets. For some reason, I've got the little net and James has got the really big one. We have a bucket and we have a clipboard with, when I can get it open, some little bingo sheets. Now all I did was I took some photos, put them up onto a sheet of things that I thought we were going to find. So there's, there's some seaweeds on there, there's some shells, there's some fish, some shrimps, some crabs, and enemies, urchins, all types of different things that you can find on the shore. I took them to a local printer's and I got them laminated so they don't get all soggy wet when we're in the rock pools. And all James and I are going to do is we're going to work our way down along the low tide line and we're going to see who can fill up their sheet first. Yes. James has already had a head start. <laughs> what I'm going to do, sorry what? You've already found a winkle. You've already found a winkle. What we're going to do is actually, I will put these in it, these sheets, I will put them in here now. So if you want to screenshot them and print them out, you can play rock pool bingo too. Now coming down on the shore, if you've watched any of our foraging videos before, we always talk about spring tides being the best time to come rock pulling or foraging. And there's two types of tides. Spring tides are the very large tides. The tide goes in and out over a 12 hour period. It takes six hours, just over six hours to go down and six hours to come back up. And the tide is affected by the moon and the sun and their position around the earth. A spring tide is a very large tide, meaning that there's a great range between high tide and low tide. And a neap tide is a small tide. That means that there's a small range between high tide and low tide. Obviously, we want the tide to go out as far as possible. So as close to spring tides, the better. I will show you here now how to work out when low tide is in your area. There are numerous sources for tidal information. The simplest is just to do a Google search for your location. In the UK, I like to use tidetimes.org.uk. Today is Wednesday the 5th. This shows me that the first low tide of the day is at 5 past midnight, at a height of nearly 0.9 metres. The first high tide is just before 6am. The low tide that we want is at 25 past 12 and is at 0.7 metres above chart data. This site also shows you how long until the next set of tides. You can delve deeper into things, but for this exercise, we'll just keep it simple. We have got ourselves down on the beach and we are two hours before low tide, so the tide's ebbing off for two more hours. That, you need to know what that is uh, for, for a safety feature also, because you want to know when low tide is so you can start making your way back up so that you don't get stuck. So we'll break these up. James, you can have your two in your clipboard. There's your two. With your bright purple clipboard. And I've got my two. Am I going to carry the bucket, am I? Yeah? Yeah, yeah okay. We will see what else we can find along the way. I will try and explain as many interesting facts as I can about the little bits and pieces that we find. We're just out to have a little bit of fun. Yeah. It's a lovely day for it, isn't it? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. I think I've found the first thing on our sheet, James. You can hear them, can't you? Yeah. Seagulls, herring, seagull, seagull is a broad term for them. And those are herring gulls. There isn't actually a seagull, like there isn't a bird called seagull. They're either herring gulls or the kittiwakes or they're fulmers or there's something else. Blackback gulls, lesback gulls. We have lots around this area. Those there are herring gulls. You don't just find them on the coast either. You can find them inland. In fact, quite often what you'll see is they've, they've moved into cities now. And you will see them even like working around in farmer's fields. If you're ever driving past a farmer's field when he's ploughing the field, you will see flocks of seagulls eating all the worms and the shrews and all the little bit, bit, bits and pieces. But yeah, they eat anything. They are like your coastal alarm clock. Herring gulls. Right, so we've got one tick each, we've found seagulls. Up here, high up on the tide line, where we are right now, isn't it? You don't see very many things 
because this is where all like the waves and all get smashed around don't you and all these little pebbles all get walked about so anything living up here would have to be very very robust all the seaweeds it's just the things that can cling right tight onto the rocks Dad, yes I've already found a winkle. you have you found a little winkle shell what we're going to try and do now is we're going to try and find as many live things as we can like live mussels and live cockles and live whelks and things like that and if we can't we'll come back up here and we'll look for the, look for the shells on the way up okay. because this area up here high up on the high tide line this is uncovered for probably three quarters of the day whereas the low tide line is only uncovered for a short period of time that is where we're going to spend most of our time today right so when we're walking across these rocks what are we likely to see right first things we're going to look winkles and limpets good man straight away limpets so we've found our limpets next thing we need to look for is some whelks I can do there's lots of different species of limpets that you can see you, well you'll You'll tell them by how flat they are, how sharp they are, how many ridges they've got. Here in the UK, we don't really eat them. But we do have some viewers over in like the, uh, the Pacific Islands, and they're called them Opihi, and they say that they're a delicacy over there. I've tried them a couple of times, and it must be either that theirs are different and they taste better, or it's an acquired taste, and I haven't acquired it yet. <laughs> a little interesting fact about limpets is the hardest known naturally occurring substance in the world it's not a diamond or anything like that it's a limpet's tooth you can feel free to to google and fact check these and point out point out where i've made a mistake but yeah there you go so we found one on to the next one we are still high up on the tide line here we are working our way down this area like i've said is the main of the surf area we're up on a reef so you'll see there's no big seaweeds just because the rough water would rip them off everything that there is is small and it's hanging on tight to the rocks isn't it so there's barnacles there's winkles and what are these pink coral weeds pink coral weeds, pink coral weeds. well done you found one you'll notice here this is this is like the tide line of the pool that they're in so they'll only live in water see how they're all the way they're only as high as what the water goes to coral weeds are present all around the british isles like everywhere I've, everywhere that i've been around the british isles i've seen coral weeds you get all sorts of different types some of them make like a little bush some of them have got long fronds and some of them just kind of cling to a rock almost like like a fungus like a lichen See them here, look. Yep, yeah, mixed in there with some pepper dulls, devil's tongue weed. So, what else do we need to find? We need to find cockles, mussels, kelp, bladderwrack. Right, the next things we'll be looking for, I think we are going to see some sea lettuce and some bladderwrack. As we start moving a little bit further down there towards the water, and as we start getting into an area where it's a little bit deeper we're going to start seeing some more as we're getting further down into the rock pools you'll notice that the stones are starting to get bigger aren't they James? Yeah. we're starting to get some little bits of gullies here are two big kelps aren't they that you yeah. spotted attached to that rock yeah. now this is how they anchor on this is how they cling onto the bottom unfortunately the rock that they were clinging onto was obviously broken away haven't they? but look how long they are they're longer than you almost in fact actually they'll be a full six foot tall now the kelp living that's that's dying off the living kelp you'll find right right at the low tide line it used to be when it's all washed up on like a high tide line and it's dead it is collected and used as fertilizer but back in the open well, say the olden days as if it was a specific period of time back in the olden days they used to harvest kelp for the iodines there was an industry in of it. So yeah, when we you'll find actually 
the seaweeds are edible. Wow, what you for? Oh, that is keel a. Worms. That, you are right, keel worms on a limpet shell. So have you ticked off your kelp? Yep. Right, and you're going to tick off your keel worms as well. Yeah. Keel worms that you can see. We're going to see these a lot as we start moving down to the low tide line. They are on many things like this rock here. All the little white worms that you can see. All these. These are all a little polychaete worm. They're a little worm that creates a calcium shell to hide inside of. When the tide comes in, they've got like a little fan that comes out the end of it and they filter feed for plankton and other bits of detritus. I'm assuming that they're called keel worms because they appear on the keels of ships. You're doing well, James. Yeah. Also, what else have we got round here? Have a look and see what's on your board. What's on your clipboard? What other types of things are we looking for, possibly? We're looking for bladder rack. Bladder rack. Where's some bladder rack then? There. I'll tell you what, yeah. You spotted that, didn't you? Here we have some bladder rack. And do you know why we have these? Do you know why it's called bladder rack? Because it's got these little bladders in it and it has the bladders in it bladder rack there's a couple of there's a couple of different types that we'll see around there this you can see it's almost like it's had its air cut because it's up it's up like this one and that one like i was saying about this being a very turbulent area on the shore where all the waves these have all been ripped up we'll find some better bladder racks down there but yeah the, the reason why they've got a bladder in them is so that they float when the tide comes in so that they're closer towards the surface. They're photosynthesizers, so they want to be nearer to the sun. So yeah, when the tide comes in, they all kind of float with the bladders. Also, what have we found here? Winkles. Right. What are we looking for? What have you got now? So, so we found your kelp, found your bladder rack, found your pink coral weed, found your keel worms, your limpets. And winkles. So dog whelks. No, they're not dog whelks. What's that say there? Welks. So these are dog whelks. What do you think that is? Dog whelk. Dog whelk. They're all around us. They are. Most of these are winkles. The little stubby fat ones that you can see are winkles. But the, the longer ones, the white ones, the yellow ones there, these... You can get blue ones if you're lucky. Yeah, you can do. You can get all sorts of colours. I've put a picture in there of all the different ones that I've found. You get purple, you get brown and white striped, you get all sorts. These are dog whelks. Dog whelks, they're not like winkles. Winkles are grazers. Winkles are herbivores. They are like graze around and eat algae. These are carnivorous. These will scoot along, scoot along, get on top of a limpet or something like that. And they drill into it with a little, with a little tooth. And they'll drink what's on the inside. They'll eat winkles, they'll eat limpets, they'll eat anything they can. So yeah, if you're... If you're up on the high tide line, so I'm looking. Big yes, yes, you're right. If you're up on the high tide line and you're finding shells like limpets that have got a tiny, perfectly round hole drilled in it, oh, it's them. One. It's them. But yeah, these are. These are your bladder racks. Also got your pom pom weed. You can see why it's called a pom pom weed now, can't you? It just, like it just looks like a pom pom, doesn't it? Look. And there's your pepper dulls. So what else are we looking for now? We've come a little bit further down to where the bigger rock pools are now. And what have you found? Sea lettuce. Show me then, which is a sea lettuce? So not the skinny stuff, the chunky weed. You are absolutely right. This is your sea lettuce. Yeah, look, like big, big leaves of it, haven't they? So what have you found? So you found your sea lettuce as well. Pickle. Sea lettuce is one of the easiest ones for you to be able to spot, for you to be able to like identify, and it is delicious. It's We've yeah, it is. Ed well, all of it's edible, James. There are no technically there are no toxic seaweeds, so technically all of it's edible. 
some of it's just nicer to eat than others <laughs> um, on that same vein though there are some toxic algae so or the seaweeds themselves won't be toxic but something growing on them might be so you'd always recommend washing it the, um, the sea lettuce the way that we like to eat it the way that we've eaten it before is you just harvest it when it's nice and fresh like this so you've got nice big green bits like this just take some of it don't take all of it and then you wash it in fresh water don't you yeah and then we steam it yeah so what are we still what are we still looking for looking for mussels mussels and cockles <laughs> right then we're i think the cockles cockles aren't going to be in the rock pools the cockles are going to be over there by the sand yeah. so we'll have a look for them on the way back yeah. but the mussels you might find some mussels in amongst the rocks yeah. we're almost down to the low tide line aren't we and then it'll be time to start working on second the second sheet we've already found one on the second haven't we the seagulls yeah we've already found the seagulls there's one that sat down there isn't there the footwear that we're wearing today is we've just got just got wellies you can wear waders you can just come either in like shorts and, and flip-flops or um, wetsuit boots jelly beans we used to wear yeah, anything like that the, um, the, good thing about, the good thing about wellies is they give a bit of ankle support, they're, they're tough, you can only go as deep as they are or yeah you get water inside them. It's very rare that we'll come on the beach with wellies and we don't end up with water inside of them. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. Only you get them wet. I get them wet, yeah. Usually me. We are right down here now. You can see how much more seaweed there is on all the rocks. The rocks are larger because these ones here don't see as much. Oh, yeah. no, a rockety book, rockety Wait. bucket. Because these rocks here don't see as much turbulent wave action. This is how they manage to stay there and grow so much weed. What we're going to do now is we're going to. These are some serrated rack. You can tell these are serrated rack rather than bladder rack, is because they don't have the blisters and the edges of them. Are serrated. This also, this will show you the difference doesn't it between what, this is sea lettuce, you can see big big leaves and these little wispy bits here, this is called intestinalis. So your sea lettuce has got your big leaves. Right are you ready with your net? Come a bit closer then. Lots of keel worms, isn't there? Lots of keel worms on all these rocks. Right. And you've got a little furrowed crab in there. So not the crabs that we're looking for. No. They're still a good species. Yep, still a good species. These crabs, these furrowed crabs. Okay. This is a hydrophilus. Now these are these are quite localised to the south coast. You don't get these up in the northeast. The crabs that we have on our list are green shore crabs and velvet swimming crabs. The two most common species that you'll find around the UK. Right, do you want to flip over to your second sheet and we'll have a look what we can find? Because I think there's something near my foot that we can we can tick off. Yeah, the two different sheets is one of them is further up the tide line. The one with the animals is more in the rock pools. Right, let's have a look. See you what, then, mate. what have we got to look for? See you now. We've got shore crabs, swimmer crabs, starfish, common blennies, prawns, anemones. I've already found a seagull. We need to find some hermit crabs and a sea urchin. See and here, then, next mate. to my foot, mm, you can see it, can't you? Let's, let's, have, let's have a little look. See him? Done. There it is, there look. This, do you know the name of this, the special name for this one? A snake lox anemone. Right. We're going to find several different types today. Because it looks like sets of snakes. It does look a bit like snakes. There are lots of keelworms on this rock, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, that's a proper one. 
Proper covered that one. Yeah. All we are looking for here is we're turning over these little flat rocks to see what's living underneath. And they are fast. <laughs> there is a little broad clawed porcelain crab, which actually is related to lobsters. Oh. You just need to make sure, don't you? If you ever lift a rock up, you put it back down. Yeah. Here's some kelp. There's some more, look here. Big seaweeds of kelp, aren't they? This one, do you remember what this one's called? This little red one here. called harpoon weed because you see like the little spiky ones that stick out on the sides yeah. they're, they're like a little harpoon and these ones here they've got like shiny blue bits on them see them yeah. that's called Irish moss right get ready see what we can see underneath here oh what was that a double crab. right get your net where's your net or your bucket we have got four or five things to tick off here. The first one, there you go. Right, come here with your net, because I can see some shrimps in here as well. Right, get your net ready. Whoop, oh, we got it. Yes. Shrimp. Right, go on then. Tip it out. Give it a little bit of water as well. There we go. What else have we got down here? Lots of keel worms, don't we? Some, some winkles. Oh. What about this? Pipefish. Pipefish. Have it in there. Just right, let's lift this up. Yes, there was a fish under here. There's a furrowed crab again. Where's that fish gone? I'm going to put this one back. Yeah, how many species did we find under there? Right, do you want to get your, do you want to get your clipboard? We found five species. Okay, let's have a look in your bucket. See what we've got. Right, the first thing that we've got, what's this one? Edible swimming crab. A velvet swimming crab. This is only a really, really little one, but you can see it's a swimming crab by the, the, by the, by the swimming legs that it's got. You see them? Them two legs at the back? Now this one, because it's really small, you can't really see, but they do have bright red eyes, don't they? Yeah, on this picture they do. Very bright. Yep. Yeah. We'll try and find a bigger one, we'll try and find his dad. Walking to the pipefish is a crab. No, this one is another furrowed crab. There, look. So, yeah, what did we manage to tick off? Prawns, anemones, and more flat rocks. Let's have a little look. Oh, look what we have there. Another big. Ooh. I'll put this in the bucket and then I'll show you show you with the better camera. Yeah. Something interesting with that one. Oh, and a broad clawed porcelain crab as well. Oh, oh an edible crab! No, two furrowed crabs, but it does look like an edible crab because of the colour. We'll put that rock back down in a second. Just let me turn this over. They're big ones, aren't they? Four crabs, I think. Furrowed crabs. Another pipe fish. Hiding in there, look. A little green one. But this here, you see that there, look? Yeah. You know what it is? I see it on me. No, look at it moving. Is that, it it, yes, it is. It's called a sea hare. I'll get you the camera out and show you that. Yes, James, that there is a sea hare. They don't go fast like hares. 
No, they don't go fast like hares. There's its little antennas there, look, like a, like a snail has. He's well attached onto that rock. But yeah, he's only a small one. I've found them before and they've been like that big. The pipe fish in here, this little one, this little green one, who is running rings around me. If you can see the colours on his face, straight away that they're a relation to the seahorse, can't you? And this one here, I know that this one here is a male. The way that I know it's a male is because it's carrying the eggs underneath. And just like a seahorse, it's the males that carry the eggs. Well, that's a proper one. That's a proper velvet swimming crab. Oh, actually, we have a lot of eggs there, look. I'll show you those under the better camera. On this rock here, there are a lot of eggs. Now those to me, they look like clingfish eggs. So there will be a clingfish somewhere around here. There'll be a Cornish sucker hiding somewhere. Let's get that rock back down and get the eggs protected. That is a proper size one. Much better than the baby one we found earlier, isn't it? Yeah, it might be his dad. It might be his dad. Or his mum. No, no, that one's a boy. Okay. But yeah, like there's the swimmer crab. Maybe. We always used to call these devil crabs because of the red eyes. Yeah, he's got some fancy blue bits, hasn't he? Yeah. But the main thing, he's got a velvety shell and these big swimmer legs at the back, aren't they? See him? You can see them swimmer legs now. Also in there, there is a little brittle star. Right, we have a few little hermit crabs, but also there is your fish. See it? There, look. Billy. No, that one is a sea scorpion. There, look. Like a no, no, it doesn't. It just has some little spikes. They aren't actually venomous. It's just called a sea scorpion. They've usually got such lovely colours underneath, look. Long spined sea scorpion. Let's just move this little one out of the way first. Can you see this rock here? Yeah. Right, that's it, just hold it perfectly there like that. Oh, there's oh. your Blenny. Blenny! One went right near my foot. One went swam right oh. in front of my stay foot. Stay still, stay still. And swam there's one, right there's one near my foot as well, but it's not a Blenny, it's a Gobi. Pass me your net. You did see Come over here, look. You did see a blenny though. Got it, see? Oh, well. That's a blenny. See where the camera? There it is. There's a blenny. That's a gobby. Ah. You see him swimming around. Oh, he's... Yeah, I've got a... Really? Tell you what, you did a very good oh, job at yeah. camera in then, James. Well done. Well. This fish here isn't, isn't your common blenny. This is a giant goby. I'm gonna jump. Let this guy go. So let him go and run and tell his friends all about it. This is right. Encounter. We'll have a look because there was another fish. Yeah. Went under here before you started panicking. Thought... It might be a blenny. Okay. We did it. The other fish. We got one. Is a blenny. Oh. Get out of the net. That is your common blenny, also called a shanny. Put him back. 
those have got little crabs in. We'll wait for them to come out. Okay, so what have we found in that pool then? Blennies. Found some blennies. Um. Hermit crabs. So we still need to find a shore crab, a starfish and a sea urchin. Because we found a brittle star, didn't we? But we didn't find a starfish. Those little guys in there. I'll try and zoom in and show you I'm coming out. We're almost coming to low tide, so the tide's about to turn and come back in. So James and I, we've moved up to a different part of the shore, which is more sandy beach, because what have we got left to find? We've got left to find sea urchins. Sea urchins, starfish, shore crabs, and what else is there underneath here that we need? Cockles and mussels. Now I think, I think, other than the sea urchin, which we might not be able to find today because there just wasn't any in the rock pools that we could get to, this wasn't a very large tide. The other stuff, I think, is going to be closer towards the beach. And if we can't find the alive ones, we'll probably find the shells up on the shore. All these big, big patches of kelp that have been washed in. You know, like I was saying earlier on about it being real good fertiliser. Well, this is what you come and collect. Oh, look. Oh, you see that one go? There's a goby there. But here, here is your shore crab. This one's actually a pregnant female. See all the eggs underneath there? Oops. So even though she's she's orange and brown, that is your green shore crab. Shore crab. If you have a look, it is female. almost an exact replica, isn't it? Look. Yeah, it's a female. Let's get this lady back under a rock, but she has got lots of eggs underneath there. These are the most common type of crabs you'll find them pretty much all around the British Isles. I've just flipped this rock and we have everything we want to find plus something else. We have your anemones, we have your sea urchins, we have your starfish, there's another strawberries anemone down there, lots of little crabs, here's another cushion star look, We've found everything under one rock and something extra, something what I don't actually know what it is yet. That is, a, that is an unusual one. Yeah, go on, get the bucket because we have everything here. There's your beautiful little cushion star. There's your green sea urchin. You see him just sending out all of his little, little tendrils. And this here, Looks like a ragworm, but it's got like scales on top of it. I don't actually know exactly what that is. I will find out. Okay, so right at the last minute, what did we find? Starfish. Starfish and a sea urchin. We finished the second. Just goes to show, doesn't it? I think my best bet is to have a look around like the high tide line to look to see if we can't find some shells. Drop these back in a rock pole and we'll get going. They're quite fast when they want to be aren't they? What have we found now? Mussels. Right up on near the high tide line like I said. Mussels. Mussels. No, just have one thing. In little clusters. Yeah, those little mussels, they're only tiny. You can only really take them to eat when they're about that big, but they are fascinating creatures. The, uh, the full grown ones can filter out 20 litres of seawater a day. We've, we've done lots of foraging videos before where we've, we've collected them eat, and of course they are delicious. Yeah. There's one more to tick off, there's your mussels. James and I have just about finished on the shore. On the way up, we did manage to find a couple of clamshells and a little bit of sea glass didn't we yeah so they're not technically cockles 
they but do. they are very very close aren't they yeah we could just tick so you can tick it off if you want to well done so let's have a look what did we get we had limpets cockles whelks mussels kelp bladder rack keel worms pink coral weed lettuce and everything at the end didn't we yeah we got full rock pool bingo yes well done I hope you enjoyed joining us, I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later.